hello. Today I thought I'd take a look at the Derwent Inktense watercolour pencils. I showed this 72 pack in my recent art haul video. I hadn't particularly been looking to get more watercolour pencils, but this was on such a reasonable offer on Amazon, I think there was about a third off, that I decided to go for it. So this is the full range of Inktense watercolour pencils the 72 and there are two layers inside the tray inside the tin so first off I'm just going to take a look at sharpening them I don't 100% know how soft the leads are so I'm just going to sharpen them to two different lengths of point and see which ones function better Okay, so I've used the Derwent mechanical pencil for the long point here, and then the Coombe double sharpener for a smaller point. Okay, so this is the long pointed one, and the very tip snapped off there. They lay down very, they feel quite creamy when they lay down. Quite pleasant to use. Let's just try the shorter one. Okay, so the very, the very end tip of that I snapped off just then. I think you can get away with either sharpener, to be honest. The lead feels strong enough to hold that longer point and the very very tip snapped off both of them so I don't think it really matters which sharpener you use particularly. They leave behind a bit of crumb on the paper. Let's see how pigmented they are. So I'm using some, these are actually torn out sheets that I've guillotined down from a, um, a Moleskine watercolour sketchbook. So the original drawing lines have disappeared quite nicely. And it releases quite a lot of pigment. So the big difference between the ink tense and other watercolour pencils are that the ink tents, funnily enough, basically create ink, which once it's dried doesn't re-wet in the same way that I think other watercolour pencils do. So we'll let that dry a minute and then we'll see how that works. Just as a comparison I get out my Faber-Castell Albrook Dura watercolour pencils. So softness wise There's not a huge amount of difference in how soft they feel to lay down colour. They're both actually really nice, really nice pencils to use. The ink tents might feel slightly softer. I'm not sure. I feel like the Albrook Dura pencil releases its pigment even more easily than with the ink tents. Okay, so now that the ink tents swatch has, has dried a little bit, let's see what happens. So some of it's coming off. 
maybe I should let it dry longer. I'll do another ink tense swatch and then I'll let that dry completely this time. So this was the Albrecht Durer ink tense, ink tense, ink tense. We'll leave those to dry and then we'll come back and look at those later. Next I'll have a look at how they blend. I was just curious to see how that's going to blend out with dry pencil. And I compared it to the Caran d'Ache Luminance, which as you can see, the colours merge into each other more easily than they do with the ink tents. And just take a look at how they mix with water now. And I'll compare them with the Albrecht drawer. The ink tents have got really, really lovely, vivid colours. So that that was a fairly similar experience there to be honest. That was our ink tents. This was our Albrook, oops, Albrook drawer. So they were the dry ones. And the wet ones. Right, I'll just go back to these now and see if they've dried a bit more. Okay, so definitely some ink is coming away from the ink tents. I can wear down the colour a little bit. See that how that compares with the Albrecht Durer line. I'm surprised actually that the Albrecht drawer I didn't re-wet more to be honest. There's not a huge amount of difference in that in those samples. I'll let those dry right till the end of the video now, make sure they're completely bone dry.
before I do a sketch I want to swatch out the colours because I always like having them on hand especially with watercolour pencils where the colour can change a lot from the lead colour. So looking at this first page, I think I was really drawn to the deeper, darker colours. They're really lovely. Um, this Shiraz here, for example, and the dusky purple, the dark purple, and I think the deep indigo are really, really gorgeous colours. Uh, they don't all seem to re-wet equally well. Um, this cadmium yellow and the Sicilian yellow um, took a fair bit of re-wetting and they don't all seem as pigmented as each other either. There's a, not a huge variation but, but some. And the second half of the set. So on this second sheet, a couple of really nice turquoises here. And I think some of the standout colours, again, they seem to be the darker ones. So the iron green is absolutely lovely. And this leaf green is really nice as well. And then, okay, so here you can see um, how the pigment does want to run into each other. It, has, it does move. I'd say from the red oxide down, these colours are all just, they just re-wet so nicely. They're absolutely lovely. Um, and all of these ink and grey colours, I think they're, they're quite close, but you get quite... It's nice because you've got like, um, sepia is obviously brown, Indian ink is like a very dark brown. The Chinese ink is more of a neutral grey leaning. Charcoal grey leans more to green. Payne's grey leans more to a cool blue and neutral grey leans more to a warm blue. Then the black is again a good neutral, just darker than the Chinese ink. You have got the antique white and you've got this outliner pencil, which feels it goes down a bit more like graphite, um, but maybe smoother than that. And that is um, water insoluble. So like I said, they're very vivid colours. There are no pastels in there. There doesn't seem to be white, white pigment mixed in with them at all. So I'm going to have a go at drawing something with them now. So I've just drawn an outline of a mallard duck and I decided to try out um, the outliner pencil in the set and it does actually rub out, um, not fully, you can still see a tiny, tiny bit of it, but enough to do a, if enough to do a sketch. So I think what I'm going to do is fill in the block colours first with the ink tents and wash them out and then fill in more detail on top of that. We'll see how it goes.
Okay, so I've done the first layer on this duck. And all I've done really is just put down one colour in each area, or two in a couple of places, and just wash that out. I've not been aiming for very much detail yet. I'm just getting the colour background in. This is my little setup today. Got the pencils there. I'm finding the swatch sheets are coming in very handy to get the exact shade that I want. And then I'm taking my picture from this, um, just an old bird book. That, um, my granny bought me when I was 11. I went through a big bird watching phase. And they're the colours I've used so far. And I'm just keeping them to one side. They've all sharpened quite well except for one which kept breaking. The dying green. So while I'm waiting for the underlayers of the duck to dry, I'm just coming back to these um, swatches I did at the beginning. I want to see how permanent they are. So this is the ink tense. Okay, so that's not as permanent as I would have imagined from the advertising. There's quite a bit of red coming off there. Okay, and then this was the Albrecht Jura watercolour pencil. Okay, and conversely, not as much is coming off there as I would have imagined. I think it's a bit more than the ink tense. You can see I'm actually getting some pooling of colour. But overall, there's not a large amount of difference. So I'm, I'll have to see how that affects my duck drawing because I was assuming that the lower layer would stay completely put and I could um, get some more detail onto the top in it on the top layers without disturbing the lower layers. I also wanted to show you um, the little bit of blending I did. So ink tens at the top, Albert Dura water pencils, watercolor pencils at the bottom, and I can barely see any difference at all in vibrancy in the pigment concentration. I think they're both both really nice watercolor pencils. All right, so the duck's a bit dry now and I'm going to go in for some more detail. One thing I will say is that the tips have held their point quite nicely. Um, I'm quite pleased, although it lays down quite softly. Um, I do feel like confident to be able to do some detail with it and I am working quite a small sketchbook as well. So I've done another layer, finer detail on the duck. One thing I wanted to try out now is um, the white. So I've made this band down the duck's wing a bit too narrow and it's it's quite white so I want to see whoops, how well the white, okay so it's not it's not super opaque 
I'll put some water down. See if I can actually make up a more opaque white. I'm just No, that's not not making any more white there. Well, that was quite useful for me to have an initial play with these ink tense pencils. They're very pigmented and this is probably too small a drawing almost for the amount of pigment that was coming off. The other thing I would say about them, just in noticing, is that I didn't find the colour on the barrels very helpful. I found to get my colour I was permanently rolling the pencils around trying to get the names upright because quite a few of them look very similar. I had to look up for light fast information on the ink tense pencils and didn't find very much. A few people have done independent tests and found that some of them faded and some of them didn't. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye!